Hello, hello. I'm Heather Peterson and welcome to my quilting studio. If you are here for the Snowden Sampler Sew Along, then you have come to the right place. Every Thursday for the next couple months we will be meeting here on my YouTube channel and I will be giving you the instructions for the blocks that we're going to make for that week. And um, as I was thinking about what I wanted to start out with for us, and I was looking at all the names of all of you who have signed up, and I know a few of you, a few of you from uh, guild events and classes and things that I've taught, and then a bunch of you that are familiar little pictures on uh, Instagram, but I feel like we probably don't know each other that well, and so I thought I would start out with an introduction and tell you a little bit about me. So I've been quilting for 26 years, and I've been in the industry for about 25 years. In fact, the anniversary of my first pattern coming out will be later this month. So I have to decide what I want to do to celebrate my 25 years in the industry. Um, not sure yet what that might be. But um, I began quilting, like I said, like 26 years ago. And I started because my mom took a class at the local quilt shop. And then I was, I had a week off of school as a freshman over Christmas break. And so my mom taught me how to make a few of the blocks. And by the end of the week, I was completely hooked on quilting and I had finished that quilt that I had started. And that was in fact a sampler quilt. And that began my love of sampler quilts and part of why I love making them because that was my first project. And so that, that whole process got me completely hooked on quilting. And I spent the next while just learning as much as I possibly could about quilting. And I worked when I had to, studied when I had to, and I quilted all the rest of the time. And then when I was a sophomore in college, I took an astronomy class. And I went into that class um, and I learned a little bit about science and I came out knowing that I wanted to be a pattern designer. And the reason that happened is we were given quarter inch graph paper. And every night we were supposed to go outside and we were supposed to be charting out star constellations on this graph paper. Well, I spent most of my class doodling on the graph paper and coming up with all these quilt blocks and original ideas. And when I finished the class, I decided I was going to pursue publishing those patterns. And that's when the little dream of having my own business began. So since then, I have done a lot of single patterns like this. And um, I've also done 30 or 35 little instructional booklets like this. So this is my most current book called Trendy Table 3. And I love doing collections of things like this, where there's a whole collection of fun little table runners that you can use to decorate your home and hopefully have lots of fun making. So doing books is a ton of work. They're big projects, but they're just so fun to be able to create a whole collection of things that go together. So I love doing things like that, which is why I've done you know, so many of them in the, this period of time that I've been in business. So um, another part of my business is I like to teach classes and I like to speak and do trunk shows for guilds. And I also like to do fabric design. And I all, do all of that under the name of Anka's Treasures. So I thought maybe I should share just a little bit about why I named my business Anka's Treasures. And my great grandma's name is Anka. And she's the one who taught my mom to sew. And so it's not that I spent time taking sewing classes with my great grandma. In fact, she lived to be 98 and she passed away when I was like 20 or 21 or maybe 19, I can't remember, but right around in that age. And so because I was the oldest great grandchild, I got to spend more time with her than any of us. And I realized that she had instilled a lot of valuable things within our family. So first of all, uh, she invited my mom to come and sew all the time. And spent, she spent many weekends and afternoons sewing and creating outfits with grandma. So they would draft a pattern out of newsprint, they'd pick up fabric, they'd work on things together. And I feel like that's where the attitude of we can create anything with fabric came from that my mom has. In fact, I spent a lot of my time growing up in her sewing room and we'd make clothes and I'd say, I'd like, you know, this sleeve from this pattern and this skirt and uh, this type of a yoke and, you know, combine all these different things and she would always be able to make it for me. She never acted like anything was too hard. It was all, sure, we can do anything with fabric and we'll have fun making this. So I feel like that came from great-grandma who passed it down to mom who then passed it down to me. 
Now, my great-grandma also did a lot of things with her hands. She was always knitting and crocheting and creating, and those are all things that I love to do, too. And I treasure those things just like she did. So that's where the whole Anka's Treasures name came from. So uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about that's a big part of what I do is fabric design. And when I initially started designing fabric maybe 15 years ago, I did maybe 20 or so collections for a company that I was working for at the time. And I painted everything on canvas and would spend just hours and hours painting and drawing and stuff that, I mean, I used to do that growing up too. And in college and high school, I took lots of art classes. So I love doing things like that. But um, a few years ago, I discovered that I could do all of that on an iPad instead. And that's really changed how I've done fabric. And I ended up switching to Riley Blake. And now this collection for this project is called Snowed In. And it's my third collection with Riley Blake. And here are some of the prints from that collection. And they're the ones who asked me to do the snowed in sew along, snowed in sampler sew along. That's kind of a mouthful. But when I submitted that collection to them, part of the process is they ask for some patterns to go with it. And so I came up with the sampler pattern that you see here on the cover of the sales sheet and hanging behind me. And they asked if I'd do this sew along and share it with you. So I wanted to show you a little bit about the fabric design process. So I'm gonna come just a little bit closer so that you can see that. And let me get this program pulled up. I use a program called Adobe Sketch for this one. So here's the main print from the collection. So it's a little bit of a trick holding this so that you can see it. So there we go, I gotta hold on a little bit of an angle. So here's the main print from the collection. And one thing that you can do um, is select different pen tools. They're along the side here. And I uh, selected this one, which looks very sketchy. So it, you can see as I'm drawing how it looks a little bit more like a paintbrush or a pencil or charcoal or something, the way that it, it lays down on the you know so-called paper. And so that makes it really fun because I was able to make this look like it was hand drawn or that there's a little bit of wispy snow or like the snowman's not totally colored in. See all those details there? That's all done be with this pen tool. And then everything is drawn on separate layers. Do you, so do you see these little, what looks like pieces of paper along the edge? So like this is the little red truck layer. This is the snowman layer. This is the house layer. And down here is the background layer. And what's cool, if you select that background layer, I can audition what options I might like to have for my background. So for each skew, and this one is the main print is what it's called, I can have three different color backgrounds. So it's super easy for me just to color in, and I would do the whole page, but you can see how I can already tell if I'm gonna like that color behind or not. And then when I'm done, I can just hit the send button and it goes to my Adobe files and then I can open it up in Photoshop and do some more work on it. So that's the main print from the collection. I also love doing large florals. So here, for example, is the large floral from the collection, and that's how far I took the design before I handed it over to the graphic artist, who then put it into repeat and made it look like that. Let's show you a couple more prints from the collection. How about the little trees? That one's a favorite of mine. Hold that so you can see it. And again, you can just see how fun and easy it is just to audition different colors once you have your main part of your print figured out. So this one comes in a green color way too, so that's why I'm showing you in, showing it to you in those colors. And if I don't like it, I just hit the erase button. So much easier than how I used to paint fabric, where I would have to just completely start over. Um, then let's look at this one here. This one also has that sketchy look. So you see the plaid detail in the background? and how the little leaves here look kind of brushy. That's all possible because of the Adobe Sketch program that I'm using. So here's the little panel that goes with the collection. See it says, let us know at the top and the little snowman. So I just find that whole process of making fabric and drawing digitally like that just 
endlessly fascinating. It's really fun to do. I also wanted to show you, and maybe I'll come up close again. This is the sketch right here that inspired the sampler back here. So you can see here, there's my, let's get at an angle again. There's the little snowflake block, the little present block, which is down in that bottom corner there. Um, here's the little present stack that you see, you know, right, uh, right there. <laughs> And over here is a little tree. And so I made one of each of those blocks and thought they were pretty fun. So then I just started making more and more until eventually I had the whole sampler. So I guess that gives you just a quick little overview of me, how I got into quilting, a little bit about my business, and then the fabric design and book design and all the things that I um, love to do. So I'm curious uh, to hear from all of you. Maybe you want to put in the comments how long you've been quilting and maybe even why you signed up for the snowed in sampler so long. If there's a particular thing you came to learn or you just liked the quilt or you liked the fabric or you're just looking for something fun to do this summer. So leave me a comment if you would so I can get to know you a little bit too. Okay, now for our next part, let's talk a little bit about our schedule. Now, if you signed up via email for this sew along, you have already gotten the introductory email that has our schedule listed. It has the fabric requirements. Um, it has maybe a couple of the tools that you might need. And if you aren't on that email and you would like to be, you can send me an email at heather at ancustreasures.com and I will get you signed up for that list and then you'll know what our schedule is. And what we're going to start out with here, week one, we're going to kind of ease into things. Um, you know, there's been a lot of supply chain issues in, you know, a lot of industries, and that includes the quilting industry as well. So I wanted to give us a little bit of leeway in case the fabric came late. So this first week is going to be pretty light. We're going to do some cutting and things like that. Then the second week, we are going to make two of these blocks. We're going to start with that easiest block. So for those of you who maybe aren't as skilled with your quilting, um, you're going to start easy and we're going to work our way up to the hardest block, which is this snowflake block right here. Now the second week, we're going to make all of these little presents. There are 10 that will be happening next week. We're also going to cut the background for the red snowflake that week. Um, and then each week we're going to tackle a few blocks. Like I said, this one there's 10, uh, that, little, that little present block. That's going to be um, maybe one of your more challenging weeks where you have to make the most amount of blocks. But then moving on, you can see like there are three of this particular block. There are three tree blocks. There are two of this block and two of this block. So it's nothing too, too strenuous. And I'm doing it each week. You know, we'll have instructions so that the sew along isn't drug out for months or anything. We're going to do it just for two months. And if you can't keep up, you know, that's totally fine. The video will be here and you can look up and use it at any time. And there'll be a couple weeks that are easier and you'll have a little bit of catch up time as well. So that's a little bit about our schedule. If you don't have your fabrics yet, um, we are offering kits of this. We also have a lot of shops that are doing this as well, and you can get kits from them. You can also just use things from your stash. So uh, just a second here, and I'll show you a couple other quilts I've made that are from stash. Okay, so we're here in my studio, so you can see a lot of quilts in the background, but what I wanted to show you is this was my initial prototype here that I made before I got my fabric for the Snowden collection. So these are just things from my stash, and there's a lot of Riley Blake basics in here. You know, the snowflake here is done with blossom. There's um, the, let's see if I can get my hand in there. This is textures, and like a few other things that are just from my stash. So you don't have to have a kit. You can just use up things from your stash. And then I wanted to show you this different colorway. This was inspired by a pattern from my Trendy Table One book called Wrapped. But as you can see, I love doing Christmassy things with presents. And this particular one has a gray background and then all the bows and details are black. And so I think when I start my quilt for our sew along, I'm gonna use this colorway as the inspiration. So those are just giving you a couple of ideas 
of ways you can go about picking fabrics because that will be you know step one of this whole process is having your fabrics ready all right now that you have your fabrics picked out the next thing we need to do is get familiar with our pattern so here is a, a paper copy of our snowden sampler pattern if you don't have it um, you can contact us or a shop that carries it we also have it available as a PDF, so if you need it right away, you can find it in our online store. Um, let's open the pattern here. You're going to want to read through the general instructions first. That's on that first page. Then um, there's a little bit of a note about how to begin, and then there's going to be instructions for all the different blocks following that. So one of the things we're going to do for this week is you have to decide what you're going to do about the background. So each month there are instructions for cutting the background and you can do it each week if you want to and only have to cut that week's blocks if that makes sense or what you can do is turn to the last page here so page 14 this is the master cutting list so if you want to cut the background for everything and the whole quilt all at once which is generally the most efficient, you can do that. Um, and then you'll just have to make sure that you label all the different pieces. And the pattern will tell you this is for block eight, this is for block line, nine, for example. So make sure that you have all that labeled so that all those pieces don't get mixed up. All right, so uh, since we are cutting our background fabric this week, I wanted to share just a couple hints that I feel are helpful for cutting. I know a lot of you already know probably most everything that you need to know about cutting, but I just wanted to share two little quick things that I, I think, like I said, might be helpful. So most people do their cutting with a rotary cutter that's this size, and I've always found those to be really clunky and awkward at times. You know, if I'm cutting a strip that's, say, four inches like this one, and I'm cutting it into just big four-inch squares, you know it's pretty easy to use that big cutter and that isn't a problem but in this sampler if you're cutting your background individually each month or even cutting the little pieces for all the different blocks I find that a rotary cutter this size is so much easier to work with and maneuver so you can see the size difference there this is a 28 millimeter and once I started cutting with this I pretty much hardly ever use this one anymore this is just so much easier to work with and I'll show you a little bit about why so if you're cutting an assortment of you know odds and ends pieces from your one of your fat quarters for example and let's just say we need to cut a two by three inch rectangle if I'm using my small cutter it's really easy for me to stop right on this edge I can totally see what I'm doing and to start again right here and cut that piece out. And I don't have a lot of overcut into the background. And if I try to do that with this big cutter, first of all, it's quite hard to see where I'm exactly stopping on this corner and hard to see where I'm starting. So you end up cutting into, you see that, into your background so far. So you end up wasting a lot more fabric. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter, but in a sampler quilt, like I said, when we're cutting lots of different odds and ends pieces, this just makes that process so much easier. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to share that I was taught when I was, you know, first learned a quilt and we were learning how to cut, and I was taught with these Omni grid rulers, and they've always been a favorite, and I'll tell you why. Sorry, I just hit my camera with the ruler. But let's get this up close and you see how we have a black line and then there is an echo of yellow all the way around it. Now if you're cutting totally accurately, you might think, well, I need to cut with the little black line. Oh, I keep hitting my camera. Sorry about that. You know, where the edge of the fabric is totally lined up with the black. Now what I was taught you need to do is line up with the outside edge of the yellow. And that gives you just an extra thread or two bigger on your piece so that you can allow a little bit for the turn of the fabric. So if you're struggling with having your pieces often turning out too small, or your blocks turning out too small, that might be something that you might want to consider. So again, instead of using that center black line, you're going to use the outside edge of the yellow. So for example, if I'm cutting this piece to three inches down here, I'm not going to line it up with the black 
I'm going to shift it up just a little and I kind of exaggerated there so you can see but I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric with the outside edge of the yellow and then I'm going to make my cut and like I said that just allows a couple extra threads for the turn of the fabric and I have found that to be invaluable for quilting. I just wanted to show you another time when I feel like it's really handy to have this small cutter and I forgot to mention it earlier. So for example when you are using a ruler that has a point like this that it's really important that you get lined up and this is the folded corner clipper ruler so in your initial email that I sent out this was one of the tools I use for folded corners and so I had mentioned that. It's not a requirement but it's something you can use and to do this you need to accurately have the ruler lined up and be able to make that small cut. So, you know, like, like I said, it's just so much easier to see what you're doing when you're looking over this as opposed to how big this is. Okay, we're back in the studio now and we're gonna talk about the next part of the process, which is figuring out what fabrics you want to go wear in your quilt. Let me get my camera adjusted here. And that may actually be the most time-consuming part of this week's assignment. So, um, you know, if you bought the kit, you can pretty much just follow what's in the photo on the pattern front. But this is what I mentioned to you was my first prototype of this quilt. And how I began was selecting this fabric is I laid out a piece of cream background fabric roughly the size of the quilt. In this case, I just laid the quilt on the floor so you can kind of get a visual for where things go. But just imagine that that's a, a big piece of cream fabric or two pieces laid next to each other to get wide enough. And then I have to start deciding what my fabric placement should be. So uh, what I knew for sure is that the snowflakes were gonna have a red background and the trees were gonna have a green background. So for me, those were very easy starting points for selecting my fabric. And then I would lay out the fabrics that I wanted in those positions out on that background fabric. So for example, I'm going to do these greens for my trees and I'm going to do these reds for my snowflakes. So I've got those kind of in position of where I want them to be. And I know this maybe sounds like a lot of work to figure out where everything goes ahead of time, but I just find that I do less work of remaking blocks to get the fabric placement right. Um, so I end up wasting less time and fabric and I often get a better balance in my quilts in the end if I just take the time to plan everything out like this first. Okay, so we figured out where the for sure colors went first. So next I would figure out the blocks that take large pieces of fabric because we're only dealing with fat quarters here and if, for example, you cut some of the small presents out first and then later want to cut out one of the big presents, you may not have enough fabric. So I would take some of those prints that I know I want for sure in the big presents, um, and in particular, oftentimes the large florals or the prints that you really want to show off in those bigger spaces, I'm going to lay those out first. So for example, maybe I want this main print in that particular present and the little trees in that one. I might want the large black floral here. Um, that's a little bit bigger present. I might want this black vine here. So I will go through and figure out, and I would do more than that, but just to give you an example, I'm going to lay out those particular large prints in those positions. Then next step I would do is try to balance out the colors. So for example, after you know doing a few black prints and a few blue prints and a few green and red, you may decide, well, I have no you know, green on this side or no blue on this side of the quilt. So then you can go and take your next fat quarters and lay those out into some of those positions. So that was step four, balancing out those colors. Then the next one is, would be step five and that would be taking any leftover scraps to fill in some of the little pieces. So um, once you know that, say for example, you want this blue floral here, well you could use a red scrap from the snowflake here to make the red bow here. And those are details maybe you don't have to have totally figured out, 
but I usually just save those smallest little pieces like the bow here or the bow here, here, you know, for the end using up some of those scraps. So I would go through all of those blocks and lay everything out in the position I wanted it to be. And it'll be a little more obvious when I'm not, you know, when you're laying it on a solid piece of, of background as opposed to how I'm laying it on the quilt just so I can show you where the blocks will end up. But you'll get a better visual for the balance and the color when you do it that way. And then you can use your phone to take a picture of it so that you know where each thing goes. And then you could pick up your fabric pieces off that background and then label them, you know, block nine or block seven. And that way each week you'll have your fabrics all figured out ahead of time. You won't have to go through that whole process. You'll be ready to go and you can be confident in your fabric selection. Okay, everyone, this is a wrap for week one of the Snowed In Sampler Sew Along. And just to recap, your assignments for this week are to get your fabric and your pattern so you're ready to go. Uh, second step is to read through your pattern, especially the general instructions. And uh, the next thing we need to do is decide what you're going to do about the background fabric. Do you want to cut it each week as you go along, or would you prefer to cut everything all ahead using the master list on step 14? I know that's the most efficient way for time and fabric, but it is a big commitment um, of time all at once. So if you have time and want to cut it all ahead, you can, or you can just not worry about it and cut just the few pieces you need for each week as you go. Um, I guess one other option, I didn't mention it before, is you could cut all the, the big strips off first for your sashing and your border out of that background fabric and set that aside and then you can use whatever you have left to cut up all your blocks. Um, your next assignment is to lay out a piece of cream background or white background or whatever it is you're using for your background down on your floor and then go through your fat quarter pack and lay out where everything is going to go so you have your fabric all figured out. Don't forget to take a picture and save it. If you want to, you can start a snowed in sampler or sew along folder on your, fat, on your phone if you want to and put any pictures as you're working on it in that. Um, if you do have some uh, photos that you're taking of your fabric choices and what you're working on, you can post it to social media and either tag me in it. Um, my Instagram handle is Anka's Treasures, or you can put the snowed in sampler sew along hashtag on there, and that way I'll be able to see what you're working on and everyone else will be able to see what you're working on. And on Thursday, or this morning, I will also put a post up on my Instagram page that has that written out for you so you can see what the hashtag is going to be. So make sure you follow along. Thanks for joining me this week. Next week we're going to be making two of this little red block here on the end. Super easy, so we're going to have a relaxing week next week, and I hope to see you then.